Hello again everybody. I want to talk to you tonight about one of the most popular genres in the history of cinema, the Western. Now as far as I know the first true Western to be filmed was The Great Train Robbery in 1905. It was a tremendous success although it was only a few minutes long. But the genre of the Western took off and became a staple part of cinema history. Tonight I want to focus on one particular movie which even after 82 years is still rated as one of the greatest ever made. But first of all, let me take you to the place where it was made. Magnificent Monument Valley in Utah. First used for the 1938 film Stagecoach, it brought fame to John Wayne and the director John Ford. And this is John Ford Point, where he placed his camera for the shot of the stagecoach just before the Indian attack. The story of Stagecoach is a very simple one. A diverse group of people are on the coach to Lordsburg, hoping to reach their destination before the Apaches go on the warpath. Among them are the stagecoach driver and a US Marshal, a drunken doctor, A gambler, a saloon girl, and the Ringo Kid. The simplicity of the story is how this diverse group of people respond to each other when placed in great danger bringing the best out of some and the worst out of others. But it was the way that John Ford put the story up onto the screen that made the film special. Superb locations, terrific camera work and a perfect team of actors. But it isn't the actors that I want to talk about. I want to draw your attention to another vital ingredient in this action-packed movie. The stuntman. Not just the average stuntman, but one whose name is now carved in stone. At the height of the chase, he had to perform a particularly dangerous stunt, which caused the director, John Ford, deep concern. It lasts for just about 30 seconds, so watch it carefully.
stuntman was Yakima Kanut, who was born in 1895, which means that he was 44 years old when he did that fall between the hooves of six horses. Furthermore, that was done in one take. After it was shot, Canut went up to the director and said, Was that okay, Mr Ford? Or do you want to go for another take? No, said Ford. That was fine. In the film, immediately after the Indian was shot, John Wayne, as the Ringo Kid, had to show what a hero he was and had to come to the rescue of the coach. The stunt was possibly even more dangerous than the first, and it must have pleased John Wayne's fans no end. But of course, it wasn't John Wayne at all. It was, once more, Yakima Kanut, dressed in John Wayne's costume. Now, as I said before, that was filmed 82 years ago. And of course, today's stuntmen perform even more complicated and dangerous stunts. But Yakima Kanut was the daddy of them all. As I said earlier, Yakima Kanut was born in 1895. And he began his film career playing small parts in silent westerns. In 1924, he won the World Rodeo Championships. He was, of course, a magnificent horseman. He became a second unit director, and he still performed superb stunts in spectacular movies such as Ben-Hur in 1959, age 64, and Spartacus the year after in 1960. In 1966, he was awarded a special Oscar for making the profession of stuntman safer. He died in 1986, aged 91. So, there you are. A Hollywood legend that most cinema goers have never heard of. We're going to end tonight by taking you back to the location that that very special movie was made in. Uh, and indeed, of course, the location of many more movies. Monument Valley, where so many Hollywood greats have ridden off into the sunset. John Wayne, Kirk Douglas, Robert Mitchum, and you might remember this one. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>